class just six. I don't know what happened to the other one. Four of them. Probably the other next. Just one or two minutes for the other one. Next. All right, so before, before we start the topic that we have for today, I would like to ask you about like, um, like the class that we had yesterday. What do you remember? I don't have a question. No, but, but what can you remember about the class of yesterday? Ayer aprendimos vocabulario de, de alimentos. Teacher, disculpe, pero casi no se le escucha o seré yo. No, igual yo casi no le escucho. Uh -huh. No, se le escucha bien lejos. Así se le escucha mejor cuando se lo hace. No, entonces cache en el nombre anterior. Entonces, ahora sí ya va a llamar. Also because no se escucha, dicha. Solo es el suyo, coach, porque a las demás sí les escucho bien. Es cierto. Es cierto. Hello, teacher. Se escucha bien suave. Hey, now? Ahora Ahora ahí está mejor. Mm -hmm. right. So I will have to have my microphone like close to my mouth. But it doesn't matter. So we're going to start the class, guys. Today we're going to see uh, something that is very important for you to know. And probably some of you already know a little bit about this. It's going to be countables and non-countable nouns. Now, we have, uh, we have been following like a um, uh, sequence that we have to follow in order for you to, to understand the, the following topics. So uh, the topic that we are going to see today, it, it is or it involves about the topic that we saw as like those day before. So um, that will help you to understand a little bit more the topic for today to start. So let me. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me share the presentation. All right. Can you see it? Yes. 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 All right. Very good. 
So guys, today is our class number 12 and we just have, uh, why, let me see, 12, like four more classes. So we are like about to finish. And I hope that, well, to see you in, in another module because I don't know if I'm going to be still with you or it's going to be a new teacher. But if I'm not, so, I hope every one of you got the scholarship to get or to be able to go to the next module. So as it says over there at the topic, countable and non-countable nouns. That's part of the topic that we are going to see today. And we're going to start with a little bit of information. For example, we have right there, it says the countable nouns are obviously, when we say countable, obviously are things that we can count, like one, two, three, four, five, and so on, right? Countable nouns are things that we can count, like a dog, five pencils, one pencil, one car, one house, two houses, three houses, and so on and so on. Also, uh, something very, very particular about countable nouns is that they have singular and plural form. That is something very particular of countable nouns. Why? Because there's a difference between them. The difference between the countable and non-countable is that countable nouns, they have plural, but uncountable nouns, they do not have plural. So it's very important, or that's one of the characteristics that will help you to understand when is going to be countable and when it's not going to be countable. So um, we have some examples right there, like the first one right here. So I will have the pointer. So right here, it says, my best friend is a very intelligent girl. Here we have the singular form of the countable noun friend. So, but what if I want to just make it plural? Very simple. Aquí es donde vamos a recordar de nuevo las reglas que vimos. Aquellas reglas como de, no, we didn't see the rules. En este caso, las reglas que vimos fueron de third person. No, just forget it. So we're going, I will explain you right now. So here we have the plural form. My two brothers are good at sport. As you can see, this is a countable noun, the word friend. And the plural form of that, obviously, is just, we just have to add a letter S. And automatically, it will be plural. So there is when we are going to know, okay, if I can say friends, is because this one, it is a countable noun. So it also says that Countable nouns, we use a, and, we use the, we use numbers, we use some, any. Do you remember that we already saw all those topics? We already saw these topics. So this is like a sequence that we have to follow so you can understand each topic. So, but remember that this is going to happen only with countable. So a n, the numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and so on, right? We also are going to use some, any, too, too many, how, ma how many, a lot of, or a few. In here, over here, we have uh, some examples. These, are, these ones are very general examples. So, um, we have right there on the questions. Do you remember when we saw there is and there are? Do you remember that, guys? When we saw there is and there are? What does there is and there are mean in Spanish?
there are and there is is equal to I. The right. haber. Yeah, correct. Very, very good. So which one do I use for plural? There are. And obviously there is is going to be for singular, right? So as you can see here, it gives us an example of the usage of countable nouns. Right here we have, are there any seats? ¿Por qué estamos utilizando any? Why are we using any right there? Do you remember that? Because it's a question. It's a question, very good. Do you notice the sequence? You notice the sequence that now you understand why we are using any there because we already saw that topic. So we have a sequence that we have to follow so you can understand. So which one is the countable noun in this question? Or what is the countable noun in this question? The seats. Seats, perfect. So, and it is in plural, right? Seeds, that's why we are using are there. So, we have another example. We can create questions with countable nouns using how many? Example, how many seeds are there? How many will mean cuantos. But like you're going to give you can give some numbers or when it comes to the affirmative form, when it comes to affirmative sentences, we can use a lot of quantifiers. We are going to call them these ones quantifiers. Remember that some, we use it for what? For negative or for affirmative? Affirmative. Affirmative, affirmative right? So we have right here, there are some seats. There are a few seats. There are a lot of seats. And there are too many seats. Remember that these quantifiers, you are only going to use them when it comes to countable nouns. Okay? So most of the time, they are going to be used in that way. Although we can also use, for example, a lot of or some and any can also be used in the non, in the uncountable nouns, but only these two. And for the negative form, why? Uh, well, you already know this, the, in the negative form, we use any, right? As in the questions. So we have, there aren't any seats. There aren't many seats and there are no seats. So for the negative part, we are, we are going to use any and many to make it negative because automatically these two are only used in negative form or we can simply use the word not, and that will be automatically in negative. So, uh, any questions so far with the countable nouns, or we can move forward to the uncountable? Hello. Negativa se puede contestar de la, cualquiera de las tres formas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Y va a ser positiva solo cuando se le antepone el too many. Many va a ser positivo solo cuando se le anteponga tú. Exacto. Ok. Thank you. All right. Cool. Well, if there is no any other questions, so I, I will move forward to the uncountable nouns. So I, as it says over there, uncountable nouns are obviously things that we cannot count, like water, like light, like friendship. Why we say the friendship we cannot, we cannot count it? Even though 
we can count our friends. Friendship, it is something that we cannot count. It's like the feeling. So that's why it is part of the uncountable nouns. This one, as I told you before, there's a very special characteristic that will help you to understand if it is uncountable. Why? Because this one, the uncountable nouns, they do not have plural form. They are only singular. We cannot make them plural. Unless there are some exceptions. I will explain you some exceptions later on. But right here, we are going to see just general information. So we have one example right here. Chocolate makes you happy. And we can also use some quantifiers. For example, we can say the, we can also use the, some, any, too much. As in the countable noun, you can notice that we are using too many. But in uncountable, we are using too much and how much, a lot of or a little. And we have some examples right here. Is there any milk? How much milk is there? Affirmative sentence. There is some milk. There is a little milk. There is a lot of milk. There is too much milk. So I think, well, I don't know if that happens to you, but these two can be kind of uh, difficult to understand. Why? Because the sense, el sentido que cuando traducimos esto, there is a lot of milk, that might sound as plural, right? Because when we say, hay mucha leche, that might sound like plural. But in this case, a lot of or this quantifier doesn't necessarily mean or is not necessarily used to talk about plural. It is just a quantifier that is giving you like very detailed information about a specific noun. So, in this case, and the negative form, we can use any, much, and no. As the difference in this one, in the countable, you can see that here in the negative, we have many. But in the uncountable nouns here in the negative, we use much. So, those details are very important for you to notice, guys. Why? because those details are going to help you out to, uh, to understand a little bit better if you are in an exam or if you have an evaluation about that, that will help you to identify when it is countable and what is uncountable. So, is there any questions so far? So far, so good? Me, me confundí, teacher. Teacher, yo um, casi no lo escucho. The, can, can you hear me clearly, guys? Every one of you. Eh, muy suave. Es que a veces se le va la, la, el, el sonido. I don't know what's going on. All right, just give me a second. I will try to fix this one.
Well, um, I don't know. I don't know if I could fix the problem, guys. But well, I try to try to better fight the earphones. But I don't know if you can hear me now. Yes. All right. So the problem right here is that the place where I'm living at it's raining like very very hard. So I cannot um, I cannot unplug the earphones because. If I unplug that in, you won't hear me at all because of the rain. So I have to be in this way. So if at any moment you do not hear clearly, please let me know. So I will try because sometimes I move my hand like this way. So I have to be in this way. So if you don't listen to me clearly, let me know so I can move my hand. Okay. Please. So I, I remember that Kelly, you said that you didn't understand or someone else, I don't know who said that. So ask, ask me the questions right now, or if you didn't understand something, please let me know so we can figure that out. So no questions then. Teacher, no entendí. A mí la parte que me confunde es cuando usamos a lot of or a little. All right. So, one thing, uh, one thing that you need to, that you need to remember that these ones or uh, right there, esos de ahí solamente son quantifiers. So, eh, por eso les decía que es un poco contradictorio en el hecho de when we use there is, cuando utilizamos there is y decimos a lot of, porque a lot of has a lot of means. ¿Qué significa a lot of? Bastante. Mucho de. Right. So, mucho de o bastante, right? So, cuando utilizamos there is, porque es singular, there is, right? And we use a lot of bastante. El sentido que se le da a esa oración puede ser un sentido plural. Y se puede entender de esa forma y podemos decir no. Porque es there is, yo no puedo utilizar a lot of. No, eh, aunque el sentido que tiene la oración es plural, siempre se puede utilizar a lot of, ya que estamos hablando de un eh, sustantivo incontable. Teacher, se oye bien, suave, se va la voz. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. Es que creo que tengo, tiene que tenerlo más cerca, teacher, no sé. Yeah, like closer. <laughs> así, así, así. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. eh, a ver si comprendí. En Contable, only singular. Only use there is singular. No, uh, no, no. So in contables, in los contables, tienen dos formas. Y ahí es donde ustedes se van a dar cuenta que tienen la forma plural y la forma singular. Con no, un, un contable. Oh, we, sí, con los uncountables solamente tienen singular, nunca plural. Hay excepciones excepciones que las vamos a ver después, aquí en esta misma presentación, pero las vamos a ver después, ahorita eh, deben de enfatizarse que solo tienen singular hay algunos que van a tener singular y plural, pero ya ahí pasan a ser de otro tipo, pero algo que tienen que tener en mente que uncountable nouns they are always with singular form not plural, only if it is an exception. Thank you. All right, so any other question, guys? Please ask the questions right now, like right now. So someone said that he didn't understand the part of a little and a lot of, am I right? Teacher, sé que los encontables y los 
los un compatible, o sea, lo que cambia es el are y el is para diferenciarlos. Exactly, exactly. Why? Because there is, recuérdense que there is lo utilizábamos solo para singular. Y debido a que los uncountable solo se pueden utilizar con there is, es con singular, perdón, obviamente vamos a utilizar there is. O la pre, cuando viene a pregunta, how much? Que ya se sabe que eso va a ser para encontrar. Ah, en el caso. Pero el are, el are y el is en los countables, countables. ¿verdad? Exactamente, esa es la diferencia, que en los countables podemos utilizar los dos, there is y there are, ¿por qué? Porque estos tienen las dos formas, singular, plural. Y para diferenciarlos, cuando sea un compound y no un compound. Yeah, I, That's, that's the main question. So we're, we're trying to get there. Estamos tratando de llegar a ese punto. The difference between them, o lo que ustedes podrían hacer para una, the easiest way for you to understand when it is countable and when it's not countable, it will be like this. All right. Tenemos el ejemplo aquí. Si yo digo dog, yo puedo, puedo decir dogs. Perros? Yes, I can. Yes. If I have pencil, yes. say pencils, I can. So, but what if I have water? I cannot say waters, can I? No. 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 So, the easiest way, la forma más fácil es, por ejemplo, si tenemos uno como, ejemplo, si tenemos. Uno, Pero se puede decir lights. Como luces. Eso es de luces, ¿verdad? Lights. Exactly. Ahí, ah. va, ahí, vamos, ahí vamos a las excepciones. Okay. Vamos. Esa es una excepción. No hemos llegado. Okay. Por eso es que les okay. decía, este es solo general. Vamos. Check. Step by step. Do not get wow. confused right now. Just look at this like in very general form, ¿ok? So do not worry about this. We're going to understand that later on. So um, about your question. So my advice or my suggestion for you, it will be, okay, can, can uh, or does the noun has plural? If the noun has the plural form and the singular, at that moment, you are going to realize that you're talking about a countable noun. But if the noun doesn't have a Pluto or the sans, it, it sounds like, like here. Let's say that we are going to say that that will be an uncountable noun. I don't know if I'm making that clear or you're still kind of confusing. A little more clear. All right, so we are going to try to move forward so you can understand the, the exceptions and all those details that we are going to see in this same presentation, okay? So here we have these ones that we have right here are examples of words that can be countable and non-countable. These words right here are, they have both. O sea, ellos pueden ser de las dos. Pueden ser contables y no incontables. How? If I say example, like example in general, si digo algo, something that we have to know, it is that, estas son como excepciones. Algo que tienen que saber es que cuando es una excepción y tiene singular y plural, las excepciones lo que tenemos que hacer es aprenderlas. No hay otra forma. Aprenderlas. Exceptions, we will always have to memorize them or to learn them. Because if not, you will get confused. And you, will, you won't be able to, to know whether it is countable or non-countable. So, 
Algo que tenemos que saber es que cuando un sustantivo es una excepción, cuando pasa a ser incontable o cuando está en su forma plural, digámoslo así, tiene un sentido distinto. So if I say, um, example, si digo, si utilizo esta palabra o esto de aquí, IG o IG, en inglés es utilizado para abreviatura de example. So if I say example, if I say example, that means that I'm talking like in the general, the general part. And for me, if I say example, that will be countable or non-countable. What do you think? Si yo digo example, will that be countable or non-countable? Contable. Contable. What if I said un, uh, examples? Un contable iron. But what if I say examples? Will that be countable or uncountable? Contable? Contable uh, will still be countable or. Uh -huh. When I have it in singular, it can be also uncountable. So what I need you to understand is that these are exceptions. And the only way for you to understand if it is countable or uncountable is to learn the nouns, aprendérselos. That's the only way. If not, you will still be on the limbo and you won't be able to understand. So here we have some examples. The word example can be countable and uncountable. The word iron, the word cake, the word chicken, the word time. Those can be countable and uncountable. Here we also have a list. Here we have a list or some examples. Here we have meal, potato, aubergine. This word aubergine, Es la palabra eh, the same as eggplant. Do you know what an eggplant is? No. Eggplant is una, una berenjena. So esta, oh. esta palabra aubergine se utiliza únicamente in the British accent. Now in the American. En Estados Unidos decimos eggplant. But only in British language we are going to use this one, aubergine. Que significa lo mismo, solo que dependiendo del acento eh, cambia. So omelet, brown, pizza, salad, tomato, and vegetables. Esto es lo que quiero que se enfoque. Estas palabritas de acá del medio, this one right here, are the exception. Esas son las excepciones que tenemos. We have the word chocolate, we have the word coffee, we have the word salmon, we have the word fruit, we have chicken and coffee. Porque si yo digo, how many coffee? Because coffee too. Just go ahead, sir. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Eric, go ahead. Say what you're going, we're going to say. ¿Por qué aparece café dos veces coffee? Two veces. Where? I can't, I cannot see it. Coffee. Oh, oh, that was a uh, finger's mistake. So avoid that. So it was just a finger mistake. Okay. But I mean, these words right here are the ones that you need to memorize them. So memorize that these ones, both of them or all of them can be used in both countable and not countable. So I will move forward. And here we come to the same thing that we just saw. Esto ya creo que ya está más que claro, right? It, the use of a and some and any. But here we have to give you like 
like some examples so you can some understand a little bit. So we have an example right here. We need an apple. We need some apples. Si se fijan acá, eh, puede ser plural or singular. Y en este caso va a ser contable. But what happened with the uncountable? Generalmente, chicos, esto de countable y non-countable, hay veces nos vamos más que todo por la lógica. Eh, why? Because I can say, yo puedo decir leche. In, in, I'm sorry. Eh, y en nuestro idioma, like in Spanish, we could understand that que si tenemos siete cajas de leche, for us, para nosotros va a ser contable, right? Porque la vamos a poder contar siete cajas de leche. But in English, ya son específicamente contados como incontable. Sí. I don't know if I'm making myself clear or if yes. you're more confused or I don't know what's going on because I don't listen to any opinions. So I just want to, I just want you to tell me if you are understanding or if you are not, so we can try to reinforce this topic later on. Teacher, supongo que la lógica ahí es que es incontable porque Digamos, en la práctica, uh -huh. nadie dice, le voy a poner X cantidad de, de, de leche a mi vaso, por ejemplo. Exactly, exactly. You only say, oh, pass me the milk or, or give me some milk. You don't say, uh, we can say in Spanish, en español podemos decir, dame una taza de leche. Right? But no podemos, aunque decimos una taza, pero en realidad no hay como algo en el que lo podamos medir en el momento en que sabemos que es una taza. No podemos o hay tazas de diferentes medidas. Exactly. Entonces, <laughs> tenemos la medida. So the logic comes like pretty much in that way. Teacher. Is, yes. Y right es arroz. Rice. Exactly. Uh -huh. Rice. Yes. Y el, pero el arroz, eh, granito por granito, sí se podría contar. Sí. <laughs> yeah, that, that, so we go, we go to the, we're going here. Pero creo que es el mismo caso del azúcar, que se puede contar por granito por granito. Like, también. right, so <laughs> what I want you to understand is that um, that's our logic. Esa es nuestra lógica en español, right? So en español en nuestro idioma. Nosotros decimos, pero ¿por qué arroz país y el arroz granito por granito? As you said, I can count it. Pero eh, yes. en inglés, they come specifically for non-countable. Ya están específicamente dados al non-countable. So ya está fijo. Understand. Uh -huh. Ya está fijo. Ya están fijos. No tenemos, we don't need to change them. But okay. to know it is that we can only try to memorize them or try to follow the logic, obviously not in Spanish, because if we follow the Spanish logic, we are going to get completely lost. Vamos a perder. Porque si utilizamos nuestra opinión, vamos a decir, okay, lo puedo granito por granito, así que sí es con, no es non con. All right. Teacher. Yes. Yes. Por eso es que usted dice de que debemos de memorizar esas ciertas palabras de contable e, e incontable. Exactly. Eh, but most of them, la mayoría de ellos, las que tienen que memorizarse son uncountables y las excepciones. Porque los countables son más fáciles. Por ejemplo, si yo tengo eh, manzana, manzanas. So I know that I can do that singular in plural. And at the moment that is singular in plural, I automatically know that that is countable. Porque la regla me dice, si puedes hacer singular y plural de un mismo sustantivo, entonces es contable. ¿Por qué? Porque los incontables no tienen plural. 
Solo singular. Okay, teacher. All right. Okay. All right, so we're going to move forward. So we have here the question, how much, this question, how much, it will be used with uncountable nouns, only with uncountable nouns. For example, you can ask, how much water do you drink? Aunque, por eso le digo, no nos fiemos de nuestra lógica del idioma español. Porque si yo les hago la pregunta, how much water do you drink? ¿Cuánta, cuánta, cuánta agua bebes? En nuestro idioma en español, lógicamente ¿Sí? podríamos decir una Two liters. Una, dos vasos, un, un litro. litro exactly. Pero esa es nuestra lógica, no the English one. In English, the logic is, la lógica es utilizar un quantifier, como a lot of, I drink much water, I don't drink much water, I don't drink any, and things like that. So that's the most important thing. Do not try to think in Spanish, the Spanish logic. Try to follow the English logic and try to memorize the nouns so you, you don't get lost on that. All right? So remember, how much is going to be used only for uncountable nouns? And how many is going to be used only for countable nouns? If I say, how many students do I have? I can say right now, any, or I can say, in este caso, como si los contable puedo usar plural y singular, I can say, I have 16 students in the video conference. ¿Por qué? Porque puedo utilizar plural y singular con los contables. So, aquí viene explicación de por qué a lot of, I like much, and why do we use many? So it says, we use a lot of in affirmative in negative sentences. So um, we can also, it says in questions with both countable and non-countable nouns. Examples, I eat a lot of fish. I drink a lot of milk. I can ask the question, do I drink a lot of milk? Do I drink a lot of milk? That is the question. And I can also use a lot of affirmative, negative, and in questions as well. So let's go to much. We use much in negative statements and in questions as well. Uh, with uncountable nouns, example, or remember, we never use much in affirmative sentences, only negatives and questions. So examples, I don't eat much salt. Do you eat much salt? But um, as we saw right here in a lot of, a lot of can be used in incontables as well. So we have, I don't eat a lot of salt. Do I eat a lot of salt? So here we're following like the same explanation of this one. What about many? It says that we use many in negative sentences and questions with countable nouns, only with countable. Examples, I don't eat many cakes. Do I have many books? But we can also use a lot of, I don't eat a lot of cakes. Do I have a lot of books? So guys, with that being said, is there any questions so far? No. It's clear. 
clear, okay. So if it is clear, here we have our time to show that is clear. Please, as we do every time, as the way we do every time, try to uh, take a screenshot or to take a picture of it and let me know when you're done so I can move to the next one. Yeah. Done? Is it done, guys? Done. Um, yes. So here we have number two. Let me know when it's done so I can move to the last one. Ready. Okay, and here we have the last one. Done? No, no. No yet, okay. Done. Perfect. So now guys, we have uh, like 13 minutes. So we are going to try to work on that. If we don't finish that, we are going to do the same thing that we did yesterday. You will have to present me the, your work or you will have to send me the pictures. I want to congratulate the people that sent yesterday their job. So it was very, very good. And thank you so much for being working on the exercises. So please guys, try to work on this and I will be checking each one of the groups. Mr. Carlos, Monica, are you having problems connecting to the to your groups? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, teacher. Are you having problems trying to connect? I have a problem connect. Connect. Okay, no problem. Try to do it when you have, uh, cuando tenga señal, okay? No problem. Okay, okay, teacher. Okay. Roberto, we don't have class tomorrow. So if you have problems with that, it's okay. So I will see you on Monday, but tomorrow there's no class.
Mira, eh, yo le puedo decir. Eh, podemos responder en positive. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Sería there is some respuestas cortas en short answer. Series. Yes, there is. Okay. Next is mushroom. Mushroom. What is the significance of mushroom? Mushroom. Mushroom is, is like um, como un tipo de um, camarón. Oh. Ah, okay. Yes. Is a noun. Is countable is uh, plural. Are there? Are there? Sería any. Are, ah no, is is any in in uh, uh -huh. pregunta no? only. Yes. Sería arder. Ah, sí, se puede. Are there se puede any? any. Se puede any. Oh, ah, yes. Any, any mush, mushroom. There any mushroom? Two. Mushrooms también. Aparte de utilizarse como un eh, tipo de camarón, también se, se utiliza en los vegetales como, como tipo de champiñón, algo así. La misma palabra, o sea, sí, tal cual se escribe. Ok. Yeah. No, they no, they reason. They reason. By a number five. She is there. Is. Incontable. Is there, is there some lettuce? Lettuce. Is there some lettuce? Creo yo. Sí. 
Sería una respuesta positiva. Meat. Esto es carne. Yes. Ahí sería there is, there is some there is there is some meat. Well, okay, guys, I think that probably because of the time, you work just to finish one exercise, at least one exercise, right? So send that because we didn't have enough time to complete them all, but just the first one. So I will try to see to share the screen. All right. So I think that the majority or most of you were able just to complete number one, right? Right. So we have uh, 14, seven plus seven, it is 14. So we have 14 uh, exercises and we are 13. So it will be one by one. Van a tener uno cada uno because we are 13. Somos 13. So one, Kelia, two, Lisette, three, Roxana, four, Hazel, five, Heidi Miranda, six, Catherine Ramirez, seven, Angelica, part two, de la parte número uno, number one, número dos, I'm sorry, number one, uh, Eric, number two, Monica Calderón, number three, Beatriz, number four, Rox Rosa Maya, number five, uh, Mario, number five and six, Mario, and the last one, uh, Tatiana Martinez. So go ahead, guys. Are there any eggs? No, there aren't. Is there a bar barrier? No, they isn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Number three. 
Are there some mushrooms? Yes, there are. Okay, very good. Or? Is there some beer? Yes, there is. Very good, thank you. Number five. Number five. Hello, hello. Any volunteer, guys? Is there some cheese? Is yes. there some cheese? Very yes, good. there is. Very good, thank you. Number six. Are there much? Repeat it again. Hello, number six. Are there any letters? Letters? Are there? Letters. Are you sure? Are you sure that is are there? Is there? Is there, is, there, is, there. Is, is there any letters? Is there? Very good. So number seven. Are there some carrots? No, they aren't. Are there some carrots? No, they aren't. Very good. Thank you. So part number two, number one. Number two, sorry, teacher. Oh, actually, number two, yes. There aren't. Uh, there aren't much onions. Okay. But in this case, you only were able to use a and some or any. So in that case, you cannot uh, say much. Much. No, you cannot say that. Can you change it? Yes, yeah, yeah. There, there aren't any onions. Very good, thank you. So number three. There isn't some milk. There isn't some milk. Is that right? Podemos utilizar some con there isn't. Any. No. Any, okay. So it will be there isn't any milk. Very good. So number four. Volunteer guys, because people forget already their numbers. There is some orange juice. There is some orange juice, very good. So the next one. There aren't any bananas. Very good. There aren't any grapes. Okay, good, very good. And the last one. There is a meat. There is a meat, is that correct guys? She said there is a meat. Is that correct? There is some meat. There is some meat. Very good. So um, I think the most of you only did exercise number one. So uh, we are going to try to, to resolve exercise number two and three on Monday. Okay. So guys, tomorrow there is no class. I will see you on Monday. Thank you so much for attending to the class and I hope to have a great night, okay? See you on Monday. Bye-bye. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.